Welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Are you serious? Right now? This is an intro. The outro is your... Okay, come here. Fine. Let's do it. All right. So uh, we're moving up in this world. Uh, you know, usually outros are her thing, but uh, today it's me. It's your mom. Today we're going to do the intro. So what do you want to say? We need to tell them what the point of today's video is. We need to ask them how they're doing, and uh, we want to ask them to keep watching. You think you can? You think you can handle that? Just gotta make sure you look at the lens. Can you, get, can you even see the lens? <laughs> if you guys don't know why, that's a joke. I'll link Sophia's video in the description box below, where I tell you all about her special eyes, which is why she looks at me so intently sometimes. Sophia and her special eyes. So you you don't want to do the intro, or or what's going on? Look at that crazy hair I have going on. Why didn't you guys tell me anything? What kind of pandas are you? Gotta look out for a friend. Listen, if your friend has lipstick on her teeth, cilantro in her teeth, or has a weird crazy hair like that, you gotta let a sister know, okay? So you're not doing it, huh? You just want me to hold you? All right, so let's do the intro together. Hey, you guys, welcome back to our channel. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> today we're here with a get ready with me. Uh, we were just, you know, trying to do a regular old intro and then this little nugget decided to creep in on the show, but you know what? She's cute, and you know, cute people get away with things. So we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. Today we did a get ready with me. We used the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. We talked about clapping back to hate comments and uh, a couple funny stories uh, that my six year old and I uh, lived together a few weeks ago. I think you might enjoy that. So if you want to see how I got this look. Uh, and you want to hear those stories, then all you have to do is keep watching. I love you. Let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we're going to do is something about my super chap lips. I forgot how good this was. So I told you guys in a previous video that Dallas just decided to be winter. And it was a tundra the other day. And obviously when you're unprepared with that kind of weather, you start licking your lips and licking your lips. By the end of the night, my lips were on fire. So... I went into my trusty little drawer. So I went in there and I was like, I need something to cure my chap lips. Forgot how sorceress this product is. It's the Glossier Rose Balm.com. This is the balm.com. Basically, it comes in different scents uh, or flavors. Uh, Rose is my favorite and it's a skin salve. It's not just for the lips. You could use it on your elbows, on your knees. I should probably put some on my elbows. <laughs> Anywhere you have dryness, Secret confession, I know the dog police are gonna come after me right now, but sometimes when my dogs have a little bit of dryness at the top of their nose, I'll also put some on there. I don't use the rose one though, I just use the original. Okay, we are gonna start getting ready, and today I wanna use the, where are you? Today I wanna use the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. Um, it's limited edition, <laughs> but um, I used it on Cafecito con Danny, my Spanish channel, um, and I really liked it. I mean, I didn't try a single shadow in here that I was like, eh, it could be better. I was like, holy mackerel, I really like it. Now, is this anything to write home about or unique? I don't think so, but if y'all like those warm browns, y'all probably like that palette. We're going to go ahead and prime our face. I know for sure today... Oh no. All right. A lot of you guys uh, comment that you don't know how close this actually is to me. It's, it's right behind me. Um, so we want to use the Urban Decay's One and Done. Uh, I don't know what shade I am right now, but for primer, oh man, which one should we use? Let's throw back a little bit. We're going to use the Milk Makeup Blurring Stick. My mirror is all the way over here. Obviously, I'm very prepared today, you guys. Um, originally, I wasn't uh, planning on filming a Get Ready With Me, but I realized that next week, uh, I won't have time to film. So I was like, uh, you know what? I need to get started now. So this is the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. Um, it's supposed to blur. It's basically a blurring primer, but in stick form. I think anything in stick form is a lot more fun to use, you know? <laughs> You know what I think it is? I think it's exactly like the No Problem stick from um, Touch and Soul, but in a chubby version. <laughs> so what I do is I like to put it in the same places that I use that one. So like a little triangle here, a little one here, my nose, center of my forehead, and my chin. 
And then I go in with my ring finger and kind of like blot it out, bump it in, blend it out, do whatever. Oh my gosh, can you guys believe Thanksgiving is around the corner? Actually, when you guys see this, it might already be after Thanksgiving. Um, how crazy is that? Like it was just, it was, it was Halloween like five minutes ago. Before you know it, it'll be my birthday and then Christmas and then, wow, next year. It'll already be next year. Okay, for my under eyes, I'm gonna go in with the same old boring stuff I always use. But you know what? If it's not broke, right? If it's not broke, don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> We're gonna go in with um, a soft matte concealer from NARS. The two shades are custard and ginger. Someone commented the other day and said, why don't I use um, macadamia that's in between. Believe it or not, I didn't know there was a macadamia in the potted. Every time I go to Sephora, I don't see it. Maybe I'm not looking, but have you guys noticed that they changed the NARS display not too long ago where the colors or the shades are staggered now? Before it was a lineup. So they had a line of the shade range. Um, I'm not talking about the testers. I'm talking where you actually pick the products. So they're staggered. So there's certain colors that you kind of miss out on or that you don't see just blatantly to your, directly to your face. <laughs> um, so I think that might be something that's going on, but y'all need to remind me, I need to add this to my list. Danny, when you're editing this back, add it to your list, um, your makeup list to look for macadamia. I don't mind mixing the two, it's not a big deal. But um, I mean, if, if a color already exists, why not? My trusty hourglass brush, I washed it the other day, so exciting. It's always exciting to use your brushes after a good wash, even though, do you guys wanna hear something gross? Tell me I'm not alone on this, but I don't ever like the application of my makeup after the first use after wash. Does that make sense? So you wash it, that first initial use after you wash it, I feel like it doesn't apply my makeup the way that I like or that I'm used to. Does that happen to you guys? And I'm like, and I always wonder, is it because I didn't rinse them properly? Maybe there's a little soapy residue on there. What, what's the scoop? What's the story? And then I'm like, oh, does that mean I enjoy using dirty brushes? <laughs> We are gonna go in with a beauty blender. Today we chose the black one just for fun. Um, I need to dig into some new beauty blenders because I've been using the same ones for the last few months and the pore size on this sponge is getting bigger and I feel like it's swallowing more of my product than it's actually bumping out. So we need to go look over these little guys and see how they're actually working. Like I need to pay better attention is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna go in with medium light. That's the lightest shade of this one that I have right now. Um, after that I have medium and then medium deep. Cause remember I was tan. <laughs> so I think this should be okay because this was my shade last year when I was getting my iron treatments. <gasps> you guys, speaking of iron treatments, I have my six month follow up this week coming up. So when you guys see this video, I'll already have had it and I'll already have the results. So I'll do a weekend vlog on that so that you guys can be updated. If it's already live on my channel, I'll link it in the description box below. I'm a little nervous because I have been ridiculously cold and ridiculously exhausted, but it is winter. <laughs> in Dallas. So that's a simple explanation as to why I'm cold, right? And then as far as being tired, I mean, four dogs, two kids, YouTube, holidays, holy mackerel. <laughs> well, the shade is perfect though, in case you were wondering. It's a little light, but not like where you could actually tell. Um, yeah, so I'm like, maybe, aren't I expected to be tired? My uh, oncologist actually says that to me. He's like, well, you're supposed to be tired, just not tired where you're like falling asleep every corner of your house. And that doesn't happen to me. Like I don't take naps or I'm not so tired where I can't function or like I sit on the couch and accidentally pass out. Okay, maybe that has happened before, <laughs> but on really strenuous days, you know? Yeah, so I have that follow-up coming up. I'm kind of excited just to get it out of the way and to know. 
Um, but I'm also not that excited because it's right before my birthday and it's right before Christmas and I don't really want to get uh, Muse on needing more treatments. You know what I mean? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a playlist of my vlogs in the description box below. And if you go back to early winter of last year, uh, you'll see all about my anemic, my anemia journey. <laughs> I like how people go on vlogs and they'll do like my weight loss journey or like my fitness journey. I'm like my anemia journey. <laughs> you guys, look at that crazy volume in my hair. Isn't that insane? That's the uh, Blossom and Bloom uh, volumizing spray from Briogeo. When I just finished blow drying my hair, it's like boom! Can't say I hate it. It gives you like that slight like bedhead look. You know what I mean? Like when you sleep on your hair and it gives you that natural volume. Can't say I'm hating it, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna go in with Shape Tape from Tarte in two different shades, light, medium. I always have to remember to wipe off the excess on these giant doe foot applicators because holy moly, you get a ton of product come out. Which, let's be honest, it's concealer. Lots of concealer is never a bad idea, <laughs> especially when you have panda eyes, i.e. this one here. Actually, that's kind of a really good shade for me. I don't know if I should go in with a lighter one after that. But you know what? You can never have too little concealer. We just talked about this, guys. Then we're gonna go in with one bump, another bump. Okay, maybe, maybe a few more. Ooh, I needed to shake that. That is not happy. That is not happy concealer, you guys. Okay, Beauty Blender, bump that out. I feel like we've, we need to talk about something. I feel like I was like, oh, I'll talk that. Uh, I'll talk about that in my next Get Ready With Me. Wonder what it was. I hate when I forget things. And I hate the fact that I have to write everything down now. It's probably a telltale sign that I'm, I'm closer to that side than this side, you know what I mean? Which I'm okay with. Okay, we are actually gonna try a new powder, but I'm not gonna do that on my under eye. I'm just, I'm too scared. I know what works and my under eye is very, what's the word? loves to betray my love so I'm just gonna stick with what I know for my under eye area and then I'll show you guys the new product we're gonna try so Laura Mercier under eye we'll do that oh you guys know what Laura Mercier is actually having a holiday dinner in Dallas oh I'm so excited like I never get to go to these events you know so I think Dallas is catching on you know and bringing in a lot of brands so I went to that pixie event a few months ago or pixie dinner now Laura Mercier is coming for the holidays they're gonna have a dinner here it feels so like weird to get invited to these things you know especially coming from like my background where I was like a total dork and I never got invited to any parties <laughs> so I'm like you sure you want me there I think you emailed the wrong person <laughs> Okay, then we're gonna go on with this new powder and this is from Ilia Cosmetics. That's that Brienne I discovered not too long ago um, Their lipsticks are the ones that I tried first and it's a healthier brand like a healthier beauty brand um, But most of their products are cream products <sighs> You guys I like cream products, but I like them on like days where I'm wearing athleisure <laughs> and I want to look like I kind of have my life together has a very unique scent to it. Not ugly, but I just can't pinpoint the scent. I probably shouldn't be inhaling powder, right? <laughs> that can't be good. I feel like it's not sticking to my face. Let me see. Can you see it? Like, can you see it? <laughs> Let me try my beauty blender. Beauty blender is always better at this. Okay, so it's supposed to be translucent. It's very, very, very light. It's very lightweight. It feels like um, rice flour. I wonder what the primary ingredients are. Where's the box it came? So, uh, cornstarch is the first ingredient followed by mica silica and uh, bambusa arundinacea stem extract. Let's just pretend that I pronounced that correctly, okay? Let's just, let's go with the flow. All right, you guys wanna know a secret? Hopefully my boyfriend's not watching this video, but I am actually really struggling coming up with a good Christmas gift. 
Now, a little background, I guess, or because I'm going to ask you guys for a recommendation and I feel like you guys need to have all the information before you give me your best recommendations. So, my boyfriend is like a dude's dude. Like, he's the guy with tools and a Harley and, you know, uh, the tough guy job stuff like that but he also has like a techie side you know he, he loves all Apple products he's very intelligent in that regard like he knows about technology and he's handy um, loves football and I just can't figure out what to get him for Christmas I know for him it's not about labels or price tags like that stuff doesn't impress him that stuff's not important to him but it's like it's our first Christmas together it's kind of a big deal I want it to be something he can remember, but I also want it to be something useful. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, what should I get him? I already got like the usual stuff you get someone for Christmas, like a sweater. But other than that, I'm like, I can't just like stick a bow on my head, you know? This just sounds like such a cop out. I mean, I guess I could. <laughs> That's your homework in this get ready with me. Give me some like gift recommendations. Maybe something that you're getting your significant other, your spouse, something that they like something that's special. What did you give your significant other on your first Christmas together? How about that? No pressure. <laughs> Spill the beans. I'm going to fill my brows off camera and I'll be right back and we'll start doing the eyeshadow look with gingerbread spice. Crooked brows on deck y'all. All right, we are going to do our eyeshadow. Um, I have no idea what kind of look I want to come up with. Um, I just know that I want to use the gingerbread spice palette. I used it, I told you guys already, um, on my Spanish channel, In It Get Ready With Me, or A Maquillate Conmigo, and I really liked it. My mirror keeps trying to live its best life over here. Like, stay dim, whoa, stay dim. <laughs> I'm actually looking at it while I talk to it. How weird is that? I mean, but most things around here are a little weird. Do you guys wanna hear a funny story? Okay, we're gonna go in with powdered sugar. That's this color right here. Oh my gosh, when I used it for the first time, I almost had a heart attack. It's so pigmented. Like, I mean, pigmented. By the way, people used to tease me at how I say pigmented, pigmented, pigmented. So I got in my own head. Now I try to avoid ever using that word on my channel. <laughs> I'm self-conscious, you guys. Like, I don't want to change in front of you anymore. <laughs> so look at how pigmented it is. Pigmented. <laughs> Pigmented it is um, Okay, so you guys know I'm a boy mom. I have two boys one is almost four the other one's almost six So my almost six-year-old is like a little wise Guru, he's like a brilliant brilliant child now. We're gonna go in with Ooh, How about sugar daddy? <laughs> so on if I do. Let's go in with a mixture of sugar daddy and looky at my cookie. It's like a it's like a pastel peach and like a pastel pink. So we'll do like a combo of those two and that'll be the transition. And I think we'll do purple on the lid. <laughs> Am I being weird right now? Is that too much? Oh whatever. YOLO you guys, YOLO. And these are clean brushes, so you might see me like frown a little bit. Anyway, so what I was telling you guys is um, my six-year-old is my little brilliant little genius. I mean, he was already doing math when he was in Montessori and he was two. Um, he's, a, he's a wise, wise, wise child. But I think my favorite thing about him is his quick wit. So anytime you, know, you try to outsmart him or you try to say something, he's already like four steps ahead of you. So the other day he was like, oh, mom, my stomach hurts, right? And I'm like, enough, enough is enough. I was like, you know what, buddy? Monday, it was your throat. Tuesday, it was your foot. Wednesday, you had a cut on your elbow. Thursday, I said, it's Friday and now your stomach hurts? Like every day, it's always something. And I would, it was, for me, it was one of those days where I was like, enough is enough. I'm over it, you know? And he looks at me and his face, first of all, his face was like, he was very disappointed in me. He was like, I can't believe you're keeping track of my illnesses, you know? <laughs> and then he goes, well, you know what, mom? People all live different lives. <laughs> and I, <laughs> he kind of got me on a curve. I was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah. 
people live different lives, okay? And maybe I am experiencing those things. And I was like, touche, little man. Touche. <laughs> It was just so funny. He always drops these little, like, one-liners that you're like, huh, do I still try to parent him or should I just laugh? Can I just hit the pause button for a sec and, and just, uh, just laugh? Oh, here's another story that happened just last week. Okay, now we're going to go in with um, a smaller blending brush, MAC 217 and the color Figgy Pudding. That's a purple. Um, the other day, uh... The present that I originally had purchased uh, for Parker, my boyfriend, for Christmas arrived. And I opened it and I was like, what do you think, buddy? I'm not really sold. I'm applying this matte purple color to uh, the crease, a little bit above and a little bit below. And I think I'm going to regret my life choices, but we're just going to go with it for now, okay? Um, and I was like, hmm, what do you think, buddy? I swear, I need like a grown up to move in with me so that I could have these conversations with that person. <laughs> Cause I have to stop asking my six year old for his advice and his opinions. Um, I was like, I don't know. It just, it seems a little, it just seems a little too basic. And he looks at me and he goes, mom, Parker is basic. <laughs> Do I laugh? Do I say touche? <laughs> and I was like, he doesn't know the meaning of basic like you you hear in like modern slang. You know what I mean? Like, oh, pumpkin spice latte, that's so basic. You know, it has a little bit of like a negative connotation. He doesn't use it as that. He just uses it as like basic. And he goes, mom, Parker is basic. And I was like, I could not stop laughing. And I was like, yeah, I know, but you know, for something like this, I feel like it needs to be just extra special. Like it has to have something like an extra flair to it. He's like, well, you could just hold on to it and then give it to someone else you love. <laughs> and again, he's a child. So he doesn't mean it like in that way where your mind went. He just means like, well, just, it's a good present. Just keep it. Someone else might like it. <laughs> I actually kind of like what we have going on over here. Everything is blending together so nicely. I just took the big fluffy blending brush again and I'm going over both of those, or actually all three of those shades. Then I'm gonna take uh, my little finger and the color Ooh Burn. That's this color right here. It's supposed to be purple, but it's coming off a little bit more of like a, I don't know, burgundy, maroon. We're gonna pop that onto the lid with our finger. You know what I should have done is I should have put a like a shadow stick just to intensify that color. But you know what, the truth is it's like 10 o'clock and I have a lot of errands to run and I'm not about that life right now. Could you imagine? That'd be so funny. I am living for every second of this look. What a beautiful color combo. Wow, super cool. Okay, after this, we're gonna go in and we're gonna reapply the crease color um, just to deepen it and then blow out the transition shade one more time so it's almost like a building process. We'll go in and we'll intensify the transition shade again, the crease color, but we'll do it in a way where we're also blurring out any um, demarcation lines. So take again that blending brush and just a tiny little tap into figgy pudding and we'll blend out the crease. Same on this side. And then take the big fluffy blending brush and we're just going to go into figgy pudding the peacher color i feel like it's a little bit deeper and will actually make a difference and we'll blend that across the top so we're taking looky at my cookie skipping sugar daddy i feel like that one doesn't do much I'm getting a lot of eyeshadow on my eyebrow Same thing on this side. Oh, I did get a comment the other day. Someone was like, can you please do your um, eyelashes on camera? I want to see how you do it. And I was like, really? I mean, I'll do anything for you guys. If you want to see how I do my eyelashes, I'll show you. But I was like, man, did I ever tell you that story about how one of my very first 
like troll comments or hate comments was you need to go to mascara school because you don't know how to apply it <laughs> it didn't bother me it was one of those comments that actually made me laugh i'll tell you about a comment that bothered me the other day um actually since we're getting ready girl talk time anyway so um yeah um it was like, oh, you need to go, you need to stop doing makeup tutorials and you need to go to mascara school and learn how to apply mascara because you have no idea what you're doing. You don't even know how to use a mascara brush. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know there was a mascara school, but I'll apply. <laughs> okay, I'm going to dust off the excess powder. I did have a little bit of fallout with that darker shade when I was doing, um, the lid color um, so just dust that off God, perks of this right like we're baking at the same time but we're also preventing um, ruining our foundation with like a dark shadow so since we're talking about like comments that bother you let's talk about clapping back so clapping back means when someone leaves you a hate comment you respond to it right and you guys know if you've been here for a while i am the number one advocate for kindness always be kind always be kind always be kind like it's my thing be kind you know what people do to you says everything about them how you respond to them says everything about you that is like my life motto um pause for the lower lash line i think we'll go in with how about spice of life is that just is that just too much am i just overdoing it at this point should i just stop while i'm ahead i don't know maybe maybe it's a little overkill i don't want it to be too intense though like i wouldn't use a liner base i think just like a nice little blowout whatever you know what you guys sorry about the dogs barking so i told you guys that it's like the dallas tundra right all of a sudden just winter arrived and it was like bam 27 degrees so it's been freezing cold today's the first day that it's going to go up to like 70 so i thought you would you know what guys i'll let you hang out for a second sunbathe enjoy the warmth not having it they are not having it sigma e55 that beautiful shade that i showed you guys on my finger hopefully we don't make a mess let me let me stack the deck just a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna run that on the lower lash line. Oh crap, I am making a mess. You probably can't hear me, huh? Like I'm all muffled. Should we do it anyway? How about this? Maybe just a little bit of powder, not too, too much. Just try a little bit. <laughs> okay, so clapping back, right? And so I was telling you guys, I'm always like, kindness, kindness, I'm preaching kindness. But there are seasons of trolls, which I don't know if it's a thing or if it's a thing about like the solar system or Mercury in retrograde, but your hate comments being on social media, or at least for me, come in uh, in waves. So, you know, every single day I'll get a few here or there comments about how I'm annoying and why I'm yelling at them. Just like basic comments, no big deal. They don't rub me the wrong way. But every so often there's like a season where they just pour in, they just pour in. And they're actually very um, aggressive they're very salacious. They're very, um, you don't need to go there. Like it's a makeup video. You really don't need to go there. And if you go there, I feel so bad kind of thing, you know? So it was one of those times where there are just a ton of comments and a ton of comments and a ton of comments. And I feel like even though you are a, a, a promoter of kindness and even though you have a certain, um, I don't know, motto, that you you try to live and breathe and promote. Um, I think I'm gonna be the first to say that you gotta let heads roll sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't take it in the back. I don't, I don't just sit down and take it. I'll ignore it and I'll ignore it, but I also don't wanna create this um, environment where people think that that's okay. So it's important for me from time to time to be like, yeah, you know what? Certain things, it's none of your business. And so I don't, the funny thing is that I don't feel good about it after doing it. Like I know I need to do it to just be like, okay, stick up for yourself from time to time, but I don't feel good after I do it. I'm just like, what's the point? Like, 
that person was probably having a bad day and they lashed out on me and I took the bait, right? Okay, I'm gonna do my mascara and I'm gonna start with Total Temptation from Maybelline first. And this might get a little weird and awkward and I might be out of frame because I can't really look at you guys and do mascara at the same time. I might get a corneal abrasion, let's be honest, but you know what, anything for my pandas. So, um, Maybelline Total Temptation, start at the base of your lashes. Actually, I shouldn't do an instructional to this because I don't know how to apply mascara. <laughs> You've been warned. Um, anyway, so I kept getting a lot of comments and a lot of comments, and it was just one of those days where I was like, bro, enough is enough. And the funny thing is that I got a lot of heat for responding to this person. Now, if you've been doing social media for a while, you learn how people enunciate and you learn to associate emotion to certain messages. Now, I know you should never apply emotion to written word, right? Unless they're describing something they're feeling, like in a story, right, or in a book. Um, if you receive a text or you receive an email or you receive uh, a comment, you should never associate tone um, to the message because you could be wrong. But after doing this for five years, you learn when people use certain sarcastic emojis, you learn when they do more than one question mark, you learn what certain punctuation is starting is trying to imply, right? And let me tell you guys, just in case you're new around here, when I respond to comments, like negative comments, it's usually about my best friend, my parents, my children, my ex, or my boyfriend. It has to be about someone else that means the world to me to get me to respond or retaliate. If it's about me, I'm usually like, I don't care, you're right, I do have a gummy smile, I am annoying, and I actually do in fact yell at you. <laughs> do you guys see how I apply mascara? Like, people don't, don't like to watch me apply mascara because I really like spidery lashes. So I just go in over and over and over and over and over on the same side. Um, and the mascara starts to dry out a little bit, and so it gets thicker and thicker and a little clumpy. That's just the look I like because I don't have that many lashes. If you guys thought I just had three hairs on my head, I also have three eyelashes. <laughs> so the comment was something like, um, you never showed us your ex, so why are you showing us him? Meaning my boyfriend, right? The funny thing is that I got defensive instantly because they were talking about my ex. And not because I hate my ex, because I don't, it was like, don't bring my ex into this. You know what I mean? Like, that is none of your business. If anyone's talking about that man, it's me. No. <laughs> so I instantly got fired up. That was like the one spark that I needed after several other comments. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, enough is enough. Enough is enough. It just happened to be on Instagram. I just happened to, you know, get that courage last minute. And I was like, you know what? You deserve to be put on blast. And I watch certain uh, Instagrammers that put a lot of hate comments on blast. And man, I wish I had some of that. You know, I wish I had some of that gusto. I wish I had the desire to stand up for myself. But I instantly don't feel good about it. You know, like it doesn't make me feel good because uh, I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt and say they were having a bad day or they don't know what, you know, punctuation is for and they overuse it without, you know, trying to imply that they're being an a about it. <laughs> so believe it or not, the moral of this story that I'm sharing with you guys isn't to say that I felt bad about responding to this comment. The moral of the story is you should never feel bad for sticking up for yourself. You know what I mean? And so I, I just, I had enough. And I feel bad that uh, she was collateral damage kind of thing. You know what I mean? But it's not gonna stop happening. I'm not gonna stop doing it. And just because I stick up for myself doesn't mean I don't promote kindness. Just because I defend myself or I've had enough, you know, crap for the day doesn't mean that I'm not, oh, I'm a hypocrite. No, it doesn't mean that, you know, maybe you showed up at the wrong time and you caught it, but that's not what this is about. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I promote. But guess what? I'm going to defend myself, especially if you're bringing people into the mix. 
that are none of your business. Talk about me, say whatever you want about me, make as many gross implications as you want about me. Don't bring my family into this, ever, ever. And by family, I mean my ex, I mean my boyfriend, I mean my parents, I mean my kids, my dogs. Oh, sweet Jesus, when people talk about my dogs, <laughs> somebody stop me <laughs> so that's how I do my mascara and I just kind of let it hang out for a little bit let it dry and then I go in with a top layer of superhero from it cosmetics and it just clumps it up good let me tell you guys so right now what I'm gonna do is I'll do my lower lashes do you guys want to see how I do my lower lashes is that weird um maybe not all right let's just do it since you're already here then I'm gonna get a request like can you do with your lower lashes so for my lower lashes I actually learned this trick from my mom I go in with the wand pointed directly at my lashes um and I run it back and forth back and forth crap I just smudged back and forth back and forth back and forth um and then believe it or not I leave it alone so I clump it up good like that and then I go to the other side I run it back and forth, back and forth, same thing. Clump them up good. Leave a bunch of mascara on there. This is a little too much over here, so let's remove some of that. Then we'll go back to the other side, take a little bit more product, run it across. But as we're running the wand across, we want to kind of comb out the lashes and position them where we want them. I think oftentimes we limit ourselves with the way the wand is constructed and we believe that the only way we could use this wand is to comb out and to comb out. You don't. You use the wand however you feel comfortable. You fold that wand. You go in with the tip of the wand. I mean, you do however you... You use the wand however it feels comfortable for you and however you achieve the look that makes you happy right? Obviously, if pointing the wand directly at your eyes like I'm doing is, is scary for you or it makes you nervous or you think you're going to poke your eye, then don't do it, right? Do what feels comfortable to you. But I used to watch my mom do this when I was little and it stuck with me forever. So my bottom lashes, I'll always do with the wand pointed directly at my lashes I should call this like my mom hack, right? All the makeup hacks my mom taught me. And she didn't actually teach me. It was just from me stalking her. She would always get ready and I'd just sit there and watch her. I would literally stare at her for hours just getting ready. Never asked questions. I was never like, what's that for? What's that for? I was just like cataloging everything. <laughs> I actually dreamt of the day where I would have like a little girl looking up at me, watching me do my makeup and asking me questions, kind of like I did with my mom, but alas, I had two little boys. But you know what, if they wanna play with makeup, I'm okay with that too. All right, you guys, we are still letting those lashes dry. We're gonna go in uh, and do our face for now before we go in with that last coat of mascara. Yeah, you heard me. We're gonna do another coat of mascara on these little spider legs. We're gonna go in with Laura Mercier Soleil One. It is a matte bronzing powder and um, My Real Techniques Multitask Brush, which I'm actually gonna film that video today, and I will be doing it for my English and Spanish channel, um, where I talk to you guys about my favorite, favorite brushes. The brushes that I use every single time I do my makeup, uh, we're gonna talk about it. And it's gonna come from a place of I'm not a professional, this is my face shape, and this is how I like to do my makeup, therefore this is why I like these brushes. So um, none of my brushes are a set, you know, it's just I've over time picked out certain brushes that have just been easy for me, you know, they make me feel confident when I apply my makeup, which is a tricky thing. A lot of times certain tools are the reason you don't like the way your makeup looks. You know, it's not you, it's maybe it's not the right tool for you. It's making things harder for you, you know? You guys remember what I was telling you about freshly washed brushes, how they don't apply makeup the best way possible? I don't know what it is, but I feel like when the bristles are 100% clean, it just for some reason doesn't blend out the product the way that you're used to or that you like. 
Luckily for you guys, it looks nice, but in real life, it's looking a little messy. All right, we're going to go in with a blush I haven't used in a long time, and I'm really excited. It's one of my favorite winter blushes. I don't even know if this still exists, and if I'm honest with you, this blush is probably like six years old. Gross, I know, but you know what? YOLO. It's Stila's Pink Glow. It's a baked duo. Um, and I'm just going to go in, oh man, I'm so scared because it's a clean brush, you guys. I'm just going to go in, mix it up. Do you see that super professional move? I was just trying to get even coloring. You know, there's two sides. There's the purple and the pink side. So I just want to make sure I was doing it right, you guys. Super professional move. I love this blush because it's so glowy, but it's not sparkly and it's not, um, uh, glittery. There's no sparkle. It's just a nice glow, almost like if you were applying a deeper highlighter all over your cheekbones. This one almost makes me feel like I don't need to apply highlighter. Almost. But this isn't crazy talk, okay? This isn't crazy town. I'm not the mayor of crazy town. That day will probably never happen. Always highlighter. Highlighter is always the answer. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> you know which highlighter would be perfect? Pink Glow from Bobbi Brown. Hold, please. All right, I'm having second thoughts. So we have Pink Glow from Bobbi Brown. That's this one here. It pulls cool. Pulls, it pulls cool. Pulls cool. <laughs> but then, Charming Pink from Laura Geller. That's it, I'm going with this one. I saw how you guys looked at me. You picked it yourselves. You picked it yourselves. Obviously, we start off at the most important part of our face. And then we'll do the tops of our cheekbones. Oh, so pretty. Good choice, guys. Good choice. <laughs> Such a good choice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a little bit on my pinky and just give it a little dab a right here. Same with this side. Dab, dab, dab. Not that dab, you guys. Not that dab. Okay, a little bit more. Ooh, that's nice. I think we need more on this side. I'm just gonna keep going until I look like that glorious majestic horse that's like covered in highlighter. <laughs> All right, you guys, a couple of bumps of It Cosmetics Superhero. Just a couple of bumps. I kind of apply it and then push at the same time that it almost like curls your lashes. So I do that last coat, but I also push my lashes. Just push them, just shove them. Just don't shove them too hard though, because it'll get on your eyelid space, and then you'll get mascara on there, and then you'll freak out, and you'll try to wipe it off, and you'll ruin your eyeshadow. If you ever, ever, ever get mascara on your lids, leave it alone. I'm telling you guys, even if it's the biggest, chunkiest chunk of life, leave it alone. Don't touch it, don't take a Q-tip to it, leave it alone, let it dry, and once it's fully dried, just take a Q-tip and run it over and it just flakes right off. And you don't mess up your eyeshadow, which is great. Kind of like what you're trying to avoid, right? So yeah, just take a big voluminous mascara and I just do that one last coat over my lashes and I get them gloriously large and chunky and spidery. I'm sorry if my eyelashes offend you guys. I know a lot of people don't like spidery lashes, but I finally crossed over. I just finally was ready to just admit it out loud and say, my name is Danny and I like spidery lashes. All right, you guys, as per usual, we did a little outfit change. Um, we are gonna do our lips, and I wanted to do sort of like a sparkly pink or maybe like a metallic rose, a metallic pink, um, something to offset, but also complement the deeper shades on the lid. Um, I'm gonna blot off some of that balm.com, which by the way, my lips aren't chapped anymore. It's like a miracle ointment. We're gonna go in with an oldie but a goodie, a favorite. I think it was in my monthly favorites a few months in a row. I wore it in a ton of weekend vlogs. This is Flower Beauty's Honey Nude. It's a double-sided um, lip product. It has a lipstick on one side and sort of like a lip topper on the other side, but even though it's called the gloss, I feel more like it's more of like a satiny formula. It's not very glossy. It has a nice metallic sheen to it. Um, 
I guess I'll just show you guys so you know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of the lipstick, not too, too much, because that's just gonna be our base. Isn't that the most beautiful nude ever? And there was no lip liner involved. Now I'm gonna go in with the lip topper, which is gonna give it that sheen or sort of like metallic-ness to it. Um, I'll just apply it on bottom so you guys can see the difference. So do you see the difference? What a difference, right? The top one looks so basic, for lack of a better word, and then the bottom has more life to it. It's more, it just seems happier, more awake. There's more life to the whole look. So we're gonna go at the top, apply more of that. I forgot how in love I was with that lip product, you guys. It's gonna be in my favorites again. <laughs> that is it for this Get Ready With Me. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I absolutely love doing Get Ready With Me's because I feel like it's a perfect, comfortable opportunity for me to share things that are going on, things that are on my mind in a friendlier way, you know, in a more comfortable way. There's no high expectation or low expectation talking to you guys during a Get Ready With Me. So I hope that you guys enjoy watching these videos. I know, like for me, sitting down, hitting record while I get ready is such a different feeling from hitting record and talking about a product, reviewing a product, showing you a fashion haul or doing a haul. It's so different because I'm completely disarmed and I'm just sharing my feelings with you guys and my honest opinions on products, most first impressions, things like that. So um, as long as you guys will have me, I'll keep doing these for you. Um, and I think the last thing in this video is don't be afraid to speak up and don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. And if someone does something that hurts your feelings, they're not allowed to say it didn't hurt your feelings. You're entitled to your feelings and you're allowed to defend yourself. And, um, and if it's worth it and if it matters to you, say something. You know what I mean? Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like any and all my Get Ready With Me's, all of the products will be listed in the description box below. Um, and I think that's it. Y'all know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys!